All right, so what we're going to do here is we're going to review the proto board and we're going to look at a parallel circuit. Okay, on the network there's a uh, document that describes how to use this proto board and how the interconnections are all done. But we're going to go through just a little bit of that now, uh, just so we can talk in context of how this board is laid out when we look at this parallel circuit. Um, the way this board is laid out, you'll notice that there seems to be an arrangement of horizontal and vertical sets or groups of five pins. Everything's kind of laid out in groups of five pins. Okay? If the group of five pins is horizontal, then all of the pins in that grouping are connected together. So if I take two resistors and plug them into the same row, then what I've basically created is this. Okay? Down here, I also have those resistors in the same row. So they will also be tied together at that point. And by doing so, I've created two parallel resistances. Okay? In this row, you'll notice we have a plus and a minus here. These are what we call buses. You can spell it either way. Okay? Buses are connected all the way down. So all of these are connected to each other and all of these are connected to each other but not across. So these are connected vertically, these are connected horizontally. You'll notice that there's a channel in the middle here. That channel is there <coughs> so that you can put integrated circuits and have the pins from the integrated circuits each be available so that you can run them to more than one place. Okay? So in a sense, each pin on the chip has its own kind of mini bus or, or common connection point. And the power connections all have a bus as well. Okay? So at this point, we've created this circuit. What we do with that is now up to us. Normally what we would do is we would take our positive bus and hook it up to, I don't know, whatever the lab says, 12 volts. And we hook our negative bus up to the negative or ground of our power supply. And then we would simply take this connection here, run it over to the plus with a little piece of wire and connect that to another point on that same row not the point that the resistors are connected, but another one of those connection points. And then we would do the same thing down here, grab a connection there and bring him over to the brown side. And now what you've created is this. Okay? Plugged into here, though, is the power supply itself. So ultimately, you will then have that and you've now created a parallel circuit. Right? Multiple currents, all the voltages are the same. And there we have a parallel circuit. And that's what we have wired up. Okay? Good? All right. Let's ask a couple questions about the circuit that we have up before we do anything else. Uh, let me zoom in on this thing for a moment. And I'd like you guys to tell me what the two values are of the two resistors that are there. You should be able to see the colors. If not, I can certainly tell you what they are. Looks like we have green, blue, and red. And here it looks like we have orange, white, orange. And we are not going to concern ourselves with the percentages. They're 5% resistors. That's good enough for us. 
So what value is, are these? How many ohms for each one? And then what is the parallel equivalent? Sure? Oops, you said 4.5K. Two zeros. Okay, the two zeros are right. Is it? But green is not 4. 5600? It's 5600. You were off by one. So 5.6K. You know what? I'm not sure that that's red. I think that's orange. So I was probably right the first time. Let me look at the part a little bit more because I, I intentionally picked them to be fairly close. And it is orange. So it's three zeros or 56K. Which lends us, goes, takes us right back to the idea that sometimes these colors, you know, are based on who printed about and what they thought orange was. So, you know, I guess the day that they printed these out, that orange looked a little bit redder than the orange that they printed out on the other day, or it's just different because there's color here and there is a color there, who knows. But, you know, if we were really concerned about which one it was, how would we get the right answer? You would have to break the, uh, take it out of the circuit and measure it. Take it out of the circuit and measure it, sure. And we're going to do that in a minute. Uh, okay, what about the second resistor? 39K. 39K? Or 49K. You already should have kept your mouth shut the first time. <laughs> you were right the first time. <laughs> 39K. 3, 9, and then 3. So 39K. Parallel equivalent, how do we figure that out? What's the formula we use? This is the voltage divider formula. No, we're not going to use the voltage divider formula. We use that in the series circuit. We only have one voltage, so we know what the voltage is going to be. It's whatever the source is. So how do we find in a parallel circuit? Remember, we talked about Walmart and the uh, checkout lanes yesterday, and we said that we had a formula that we could use to figure out how long it would take to get through Walmart. And that formula, we then transposed that formula and moved it over to talking about resistors. You remember that? Mm -hmm. So what was the formula that we used? The reciprocal formula. It was called the reciprocal formula. And if you would give me that um, in the context of this problem, obviously it was a reciprocal formula. We're going to have one on top of something, right? Well, what's the something? One over R1 and one over R2. One over R1 plus R2. R1 and R2. I don't understand that. Added. This? Yes. 1 over R1 plus 1 over R2. Ah, thank you. It took me a while to get the right equation out. That's all right. We've got to learn the lingo. 1 over R1 plus 1 over R2. Perfect. And in this case, that gives us 1 over 1 over 56K plus 1 over 39K. And what do we know about the answer? Without even calculating, we know that the total is going to be blank. Less than 39. Less than 39K. Has to be less than the lowest value. So let's enter that data into the calculator and see what we get. Oh, I still have the answer from yesterday's problem. 56K, 1 over X, plus 39K, 1 over X, equals 1 over X. Well, anyone? 22,989. 23K. All of these, of course, are ohms. So we would have a parallel resistance total of 23K by adding 
a 39K and a 56K in parallel with each other, we end up with 23K. Let's see if that's what we have. Let's have a look at our circuit over here. And if you look at the circuit, you can see that we have the uh, uh, 56K resistor here in the same row that we have the 39K resistor, right? So we should be able to zoom out on this, and you'll see that I have a voltmeter at the ready. And we will go ahead and measure that. Um, I, I tend to use these types of clips more than little pokey things because these you can connect directly to the circuit. Like so. Now I have it directly across both of those resistors. We'll turn our meter on and we'll measure the number of ohms. And it comes out to 22.98, which is pretty close to uh, what you had said there, right? Does that look good? Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, let's go ahead and take the 39 ohm resistor out of the circuit. And what do we end up with? The 56K that the other resistor represents. We'll put this one back. We'll take that one out. Pull this one out. Well, hello. Put him across here. And I have the, uh, the 39K. So both resistors are within tolerance, at least that's the way it looks. Uh, just to review a little bit further, uh, how would I hook these up if I wanted to put them in series? In series? Uh, put one on either end of the, and then go north? Like that. Those are in series now. If I wanted to measure the series resistance, Zooming back out again, I can go ahead and put my ground here, and I can put my positive meter lead there, measure the, the resistance of both resistors together, and what do I come out with? About 95 ohms. Okay, does that make sense? Does 56 plus 39, if I have them in series, 56K, 39K, does that equal the total of what, 95K? Yes. Okay, so now you can see how to hook up resistors in series, how to hook up resistors in parallel. And once you have that down, there is no other possible way to hook components up other than series and parallel. They're either across each other or they're one before the other. They're, if they're not in either one of those configurations, then they're not doing anything because there's no circuit. Okay, so that's pretty much what you're going to see, series and parallel, and combination of series and parallel. And as we said yesterday, uh, that's where things start to get interesting when we start to look at series and parallel. We're not going to do that today because today you have a final exam, so I'd like to get on with that. Um, but uh, in that light, anybody have any questions on this? Or questions that you want to ask last uh, under the wire before we uh, take the final.